NAPTEC IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla. I will be your host, and we have Carl Bickmore back again. Hello, Carl. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Dana. How are you? Very good. Very good. So we have an interesting topic today. We are going to talk about how does application control address CMMC risk protection requirement? Sounds great. That's mm -hmm. a good topic. Hot yeah. topic, in my opinion. Okay. So our first question is, what is the CMMC requirement for protection from malicious code at appropriate locations within your IT environment? Well, I mean, there's there's a few things that are more at the heart of what we're trying to do with the CMMC um, requirements or the NIST controls that are related to it. This is all about protecting controlled unclassified information or things that might be sensitive in nature. And uh, malicious code can certainly exploit exploit that and expose that data, which is the you know, main point of this regulation. And so the requirement is that specifically that you need to have protections against malicious code and be able to know things that are running and executing in your environment. And also really importantly that the controls are very stringent and always restricted to the least privilege required um, for uh, the specific areas that have the controlled and classified or federal contract information. And so the, the CUI data or just any privileged data in your environment you want to have a very strong set of controls uh, protecting it. Mm -hmm. All right, good stuff. What is application control and how does this security measure help to satisfy the CMMC requirement? Well, I, I'm excited to talk about application control. Look, this is something that's actually been around for a while. You just don't historically see it often in the small business or the, uh, the, the local manufacturer option. This is something, for instance, that's been in place at the enterprise level and banking systems and other federal government systems for a while. Uh, I, I think the fundamental thing that's changed in my mind is this now has, with some new vendors that have come on scene, become much more approachable. And uh, this is really exciting stuff because application control fundamentally changes the default nature of how a computer operates. By default, a computer executes any request it's asked to do. So it says, open this file, run this program, install this tool. And you know you can put permissions to try to restrict that and whatnot, but the default mode of operation of most protection services like an antivirus or an endpoint protection is to, by default, let everything run, but watch what tries to run and try to stop it if it's a bad thing. Um, application control fundamentally flips that on its head and says, by default, nothing is allowed to execute except what is expressly permitted. And so that's just a very different approach to the protection of your environment. And that's, in my mind, so much more capable of stopping something that's never been seen before or a hidden attack that's finding its way in through all the various ways that they can. And so to me, this has become the ultimate way to put in a protection service. You know, when you look at the NIST controls, they have the five categories of identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. When you're looking at the protection side of this, when you're looking at servers and workstations, application control is among the best, most complete type of protection you can put in place. Uh, just by the nature of the, uh, of the way that it changes the default operating point of view, where nothing runs except what's permitted, as opposed to everything running and only bad things blocked, hopefully, you know. That was a very good explanation of what this does. It's like having a bouncer at the door that's going to decide huh. who's allowed in and versus just having letting everybody in and then having people inside trying to figure out who, who's got to go and who's not behaving and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. The, the bouncer analogy is nice. It's like a, there's a cop at, at everything running. And I think sometimes people forget how many things are executing on their computer at all times. There's scripts that might be running from IT providers. There's... Um, you know, obviously the programs you open up and then there's services running in the background. There's uh, DLLs, there's browser add-ons that have become particularly dangerous lately as they become exploited. All those things are blocked by default if application control is implemented. And then you simply allow the ones that you know for sure are good and only the version that's good. Like if an update comes out, it needs to be reevaluated and given permission. So it's a very, very effective way, comprehensive way of putting pr protection in place. All right. That's, this is very, very good. Okay. So what are the key benefits of application control? I know we just touched on some of them, but. 
Yeah, I think I think more than anything, I, I'm convinced that this is the future of how to do protection. I think that the dynamic of endpoint protection is helpful. It can recognize certain behaviors that are going. And I'm not ready to say that we don't need endpoint protection anymore. But to be perfectly frank, this is a much more comprehensive way of doing the protection side of things. Now, it's not a detection tool, but from a protection standpoint, it's comprehensive. There are things that just won't run. So, you know, if a ransomware, you know, piece of code finds its way into your network and it tries to execute, even if it's not caught by your endpoint protection, the application control would stop it from running, uh, which is great. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think this is the way that things are going to wind up down the road, at least. Yeah. Uh, so what are some examples? This is a good question. What are some examples of application control? Well, uh, so application control can be pretty comprehensive. Uh, and like I said, there's some new vendors in the space now that we're pretty excited about to be able to provide to our clients and to provide management around. But ultimately, the, the biggest thing is, is you need to create policies and profiles for your customers to know which things are um, allowed and which things are not. And so um, it's about choosing what programs can run, what scripts can run. You know, for, for instance, Dana, you know, last year there was a lot of hype over the Kaseya attack or the um, SolarWinds attack. Both of those are attacks that had application control been in place in the right place, it would have noticed the false update coming through or the exploit and the script running and would have stopped those in its tracks, which essentially means like this is now protection for a manufacturer or somebody who's looking to protect themselves, even from their own IT department doing something or something being taken over because, you know, all of us IT people have really dangerous tools and we run lots of scripts and do lots of IT things. And if we don't uh, have all of those scripts clearly defined and uh, allowed, they can't run. Uh, they're, they're not under permission. So this is, this is protection against your IT providers tools even, which I think is excellent because to me, that's the new channel that is being attacked is get to the IT provider, get to their tools, and then you can own the environment and it won't be caught by any endpoint protection and you can blow out the backup and do all sorts of crazy things. Um, but even this application control is going to stop that from happening. So it's a really nice way to protect yourself from bad IT actors or bad IT tools or just overtaken IT tools. It's a great way to protect, protect which uh, scripts can run, which web browser extensions, and which ultimately programs you can execute on a computer. Mm -hmm. All right. So what type of reporting is associated with application control? Well, uh, so the reporting functionality is, is pretty straightforward. You're going to get a list so you can have kind of proof of everything that has run on a computer at all the levels with all the various components I've been talking about. So this could be really great from a forensic standpoint or just really great from a proof of what has been run on a system. Uh, and uh, the other things you, you can uh, really kind of set up different profiles to ma match and monitor. So maybe certain systems have access to CUI and they have a different profile while other systems don't, but you still want to control and administer them with application control. And you can report on the different configurations and the different uh, programs that, are, that have been executing. Uh, it can be a great way to see what's really being tried to, to happen in your network. It also can be a great way for you to have a log of when something was approved. Uh, so you can get some change control uh, reporting out of it as well, because uh, if something new that's not per permitted is looking to be added, uh, the change control system would record it in the application control utility. So you'd know and document who changed it and for what and for what purpose. And is this required for CMMC? Well, yes, change control is required. Um, I don't know that specifically application control itself is, but this controls many of the controls. So it's more of a tool for many of the existing requirements. So uh, this is a approach that I think does several controls in one, uh, in one solution for you. So that, that's good. It's very helpful then. Yeah, yeah, in indeed. It, it's really a shortcut way. And like I said, in my mind, it's the best way to do protection. Yeah. And what about the expense, just roughly? Is, is this something crazy or is it not crazy? Just to generate. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you're looking at, at uh, you know, from a, from a licensing standpoint, it's not crazy. It's sort of similar to what you might pay for uh, an endpoint protection tool. Uh, and then, you know, there's labor involved in managing it and everybody's going to have different methods and man management and whatnot. So, uh, but, you know, it's not it's not crazy. It's not like, a, you know, purchasing an entire SIM package or, 
implementing uh, some, you know, ERP software or anything like that. It, it's really in that same vein, like an endpoint protection on the pricing and management end. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So as a quick recap, how does application control put businesses in the security driving seat? Well, I think the difference here is, do you want to be trying to catch, let everything run and try to catch the bad guys from doing stuff? Or do you want to just prevent it up front and only allow in the door, like you said with the bouncer analogy, the things that you know to be good that have been verified and validated. It really makes a lot of the noise go away, and it really makes a lot of the environments more stable and more reliable because uh, things are not changing on a regular basis, and when they are, they're expressly approved. And so in my, in my point of view, that's really the, the aim of this. It's about knowing everything that can execute on a computer and making sure everything is correct and approved. To, to me, it's uh, much more comprehensive than other tools out there. When you put this in place, is, does it, is this very disruptive to the organization while they're trying to figure out, I need this, I need this? Yeah, it's a great question. Look, um, it can be if not done correctly. Mm -hmm. And so you could put it in place and just throw a lockdown on and then nothing works. Um, that's not how we do it. but uh, And I don't think most people would approach it that way, but it really does come down to having experience with the tool and some expertise. But the, the main concept is, is usually you're putting a policy out and you're doing some, uh, some non-interruptive reviewing of what's executing. So you can put tools out there, see everything that's running, create your policy, and then go to enforcement after it's monitored the environment. We're typically somewhere between two and four weeks that we will monitor before we put a, a control restriction in place, uh, a policy for that. And that allows us time and space to make sure that we see things executing mm -hmm. and have decided whether they should or shouldn't be allowed mm -hmm. and to create that policy without a major interruption. But, you know, then again, you, one thing to remember about this is a real, a real good caution is like if if somebody wants to now join some new, um, you know, I don't know, webinar tool that they don't already have installed, you know, the IT people can't just fly over, throw in their admin credentials and let that software be installed. It now has to go through an approval cycle with the application control. I would argue that that's a good thing, but it does mean that you need to prepare a little bit if you're going to try to introduce some new utility, some new browser extension, some new web calling thing. Those are the things that we see that come up or maybe a new printer or scanner. You just have to remember that not only do you need to go through the process of approving, doing the IT work to install it, you also need to improve all the applications and related software through the application control utility. Yeah, once again, uh, I'd argue that that's actually better that you're doing that than just letting it go and seeing, making sure, you know, hoping nothing bad happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the executives at some of the companies that are dealing with this and get caught up with, ah, this isn't working. You're not going to agree, but I agree with you. I have to agree with you. This is definitely. <laughs> well, it is about being responsive to a request, right? right. So, so uh, you know, the way, the way we implement it, if something is being blocked, it pops up on the user screen, they can hit a button and immediately oh. ask for help. And our people will respond and take a look at it, do the yeah. analysis, make the approval and let them on their way. It's a minor delay. Um, but for the purpose of incredible protection in place. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, that was really, really good and extremely helpful. And you did a fantastic job of explaining that in language that people can understand, which is what I'm always looking for. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, Danny. Good conversation. Thank you. Yes, definitely. And thank you everybody for watching. And we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Until then, bye-bye. Okay, now I have a question. So while we're still recording, I'm going to cut this off, obviously. But um, sure. so I'm, I'm trying to put together these little 10 second testimonials for people that are maybe a little intimidated to do a video. And if you could just put, say something like, oh, working with Dana, it was easy. I wasn't nervous or something along the lines that if somebody was watching this, they would be like, okay, maybe I should give it a try. <laughs> yeah, okay, no problem. Okay. Um, okay, so let me think about it. So, uh, for me, I find working with Dana to be very easy. It's not a big pressure situation, and uh, she really makes the process smooth and simple. I uh, find it. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to do it on the fly here, and I just screwed All up. All right, you just do it again. Go ahead. Was that good enough? I see. Um, let's see. Uh, let me try it one more time. Get my thought together on the. See, I'm always talking off the fly when you're talking subjects. I know. I know. And now all of a sudden you're like, ooh. Okay, let me try one more time. Um, personally, I find working with Dana to be very helpful, very easy. And even if uh, you're a little bit camera shy, I think this is a very easy process to follow. And I do it right from my computer 
uh, and these videos have been fantastic for us. How about that? That was perfect. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Snapdeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com.